Today on Maker Gray, I'm going to show you how to build a modern mailbox. I think it's fair to say that this mailbox has seen better days. It's missing its flag, the numbers are gone, the paint is coming off, and it's just all around dated. I started investigating how to remove it and found that the base was in concrete. So I started digging to expose the concrete so I could pull it out. I've seen some videos where people had great success pulling concrete out of the ground using a 2x4 and leverage, so I decided to give it a try. The challenging part in my situation was finding a way to attach the 2x4 to the mailbox pole. I tried chain, but the only parts of the base to pull against were these thin curly metal details in the middle and they just bent and broke. So the leverage isn't working. Part of me wants to, I don't know, just try and pull it out with my Tahoe. I dug enough out that I was definitely getting movement. I wrapped the chain around the base a few times and then around my hitch and then I let my horsepower do the work. <laughs> it totally worked. It worked perfectly and thank goodness it landed right on my hitch. Once I got it unhooked, I could really see how deep and heavy this concrete was. The leverage finally came in handy and helped me to get this rock out of the ground. With that out of the way, I could get to work on digging a bigger hole. I'm going to make a concrete pad for my mailbox to sit on, but if you'd rather just put your post right into the ground, you can totally skip this step. By the way, if you'd like the measurements on this pad and the rest of the mailbox, I've got a full set of plans linked down in the description below. I prepared the hole by lining the bottom with gravel, spreading it evenly and level. And then I cut a two by four into four pieces and screwed them together to make the concrete form. I moved the gravel around until the form was level and the top of the form was even with the ground. And then I took wooden stakes and hammered them in around the form to secure it into place. I mixed up one bag of quickcrete in a plastic mixing tub. I'll link to all of the products I used down below. Before adding in the concrete, I hosed down the dirt hole. This moisture will help slow down the curing process of the concrete and avoid cracks. Then I added the first batch in, making sure to fill in all the edges and corners. At this point, I laid in a couple of short rebar pieces. These are gonna add strength and help the concrete resist cracking. I then mixed up more concrete to fill in the rest of the form. I used a scrap 2x4 to screed it across the top of the concrete and push it level and into place, making sure to get the concrete to fill in all four corners. I then switched to a concrete float and started smoothing out the surface. These are the post anchors I'm setting in the wet concrete. In my rush to get these anchors in place, I unfortunately forgot to hit record on my camera. But all I did was suppress the anchors down into the concrete at my measured placement while it was still very wet and very malleable. It's super important here to make sure they are perfectly level and in line with each other. After most of the surface water had disappeared, I then used an edging tool and smoothed and rounded the edges of the slab. And then I left it all to cure. After a few days of cure time, I took a multi-tool and cut away two of the wooden stakes. I used a slim right angle drill on the first screw and I unscrewed the form. And then the rest of the form pulled away super easily. And then I filled back in the edges with dirt. The inside base of this mailbox is made with pressure treated lumber. I took a 4x4 and a 2x4 and I cut them to size on my miter saw. And again, I've got all of the dimensions for you lined out in the plans linked below. I set the longer post in the back and perfectly leveled it with shims, confirmed by a post level. I clamped it into place and then marked where the holes for the bolts will go. And then I repeated all the steps for the shorter front post. I drilled out the holes and then I put the post back in place and knocked in the bolts, which are galvanized for exterior use. One piece of two by four will connect the two posts and create a horizontal surface for the mailbox to sit. I added pocket holes on one side and then I secured it into place with exterior screws on the opposite side. One, two, three. 
The last baseboard to add is this front two x four here, which will give me a little more meat to the base. I use my jigsaw and I cut out a notch where the bottom of the board will butt up next to the post anchor and the bolt heads. And then I clamped it into place, pre-drilled with a countersink bit and secured it with screws. The countersink bit will allow the screws to sit below the surface and not interfere with the slats. The slats I'm using for this mailbox are cedar, which not only looks good, but it's a naturally rot resistant wood. Excellent for outdoor use. And even better, these are inexpensive fence pickets that are a little over $3 a board in my area. I quickly sanded their rough surface down with my palm sander, and then I cut my first slats to size on my miter saw. I then made sure my first board was level and I clamped it into place. I used a framing square to line out my screw holes. Then I pre-drilled and screwed the slats into place. I'm using these trim head screws, which have a smaller head and minimize the appearance. Then I repeated the same process for the top slat on the opposite side. I kept this process going all the way down. I'd measure each side, cut the boards, clamp them into place, and then screw them in. I wanted a 1 8 inch gap between each slat and I found that a steel carpenter square was the perfect spacer. Taking the time to make sure your screws are in line all the way down will really make a difference in the finished look. The very bottom boards needed to be shorter, so I cut them to size with my circular saw and then I secured them in place. I continued this same process for these top two boards. Next, I measured to cut the front trim board. I set the mailbox in place and noticed that the door opening would hit the top trim piece. So I cut it to width with my circular saw and then I cut the length a little short so the trim didn't interfere with the door. And then I screwed it into place. The back trim piece butts up next to the post bolts. To keep the board flush, I used a Forstner bit and cut away a little wood where the board and bolt meet. And you can see how it now sits flush. And it was at this point that I stepped back and took a look and I realized that I didn't really like how this front missing trim showed here. So I decided to cut a scrap and fill it in. I removed the top trim pieces and then I replaced them with wider boards to push the mailbox forward, allowing the door to open freely past the trim. I added back on this front trim piece, but I decided to glue it on with an exterior rated glue since there wasn't much meat to screw it to. And then I used the exterior glue one more time and I glued on this top cap. No screw holes on a horizontal piece means less ways for water to get in and eventually warp the wood. The last thing to do before adding the mailbox was to add some finish. I love the way cedar looks and I wanted a finish that would preserve the natural cedar color and prevent it from turning gray over time. I'm using Total Boat's Halcyon Clear Varnish, which is an excellent choice for exterior projects. It is super easy to apply via roller brush or even spraying. It provides excellent UV protection from the sun. It dries fast so you can apply another coat within an hour and it dries to a clear satin finish that accentuates the wood grain and improves clarity. This particular mailbox is made with a recessed area in the bottom, preventing it from sitting level on my base. The back lip sits on the surface and the front lands in the recessed area. So to fix this, I screwed in a scrap at the front that will never be seen and will push it back into level. And finally, to attach the mailbox, I grabbed my slim right angle drill and I screwed the box to the base. And with that, this modern mailbox was done. As you remember, this mailbox needed improving, bad. Building this modern mailbox was definitely a huge upgrade. Our curb appeal just went way up and it looks like a pro build. Check out my plans below to build one for yourself. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram to see what I'm building next and I'll see you on the next project.